Good morning, everybody. Rick here. Can you hear me? Good morning. Sounds like a windstorm. Yes. Good morning. I'm, I'm going to do this right now. It sounds like, uh, yeah, because uh, it's kind of tough when you have a lot of people on, but I'm going to fix it right now. Watch this. Okay, so there you go, Darren. I just I just muted everybody. So you can hear it's nice and quiet now. It does well for the recording as well. But I want you guys to ask questions today. So all you have to do is hit star six, and I can hear you. Star six, and I can hear you if you want to ask a question. Because today I'm going to talk about finishing strong, okay, which I think is good. I think everybody needs to hear that. Um, the easiest way, okay, so what is today? Today is September 20th. Okay, so you got just about two full business weeks with the exception of next Friday, okay, to, uh, and then the fourth quarter. Then we have October, November, and December. Now, here's what we know when it comes to running a business. And you guys, remember, are independent contractors, solo entrepreneurs. You're in business for yourself, but not by yourself with this company. Remember that, especially with your managers and everything you guys have uh, access to. And myself. Okay, so um, we know that business happens in 90-day cycles. Real estate is the perfect example. So whatever you're doing right now, you're getting paid for in 90 days, okay? So that's why I say it's so important. The best way to finish strong, okay, is by setting up your business plan for next year right now, okay? Because let's face it, um, most people I coach, see, here's what I, here's what I find by coaching basically for 25 years now. Number one, most people know they're underperforming. Most people believe they're performing at about 50 to 60% of what they could be doing. Okay, so um, that's just a tip. Anytime I say, okay, I ask somebody who's doing 20 deals. You're doing 20 deals, how many do you want to do next year? 40. Okay, somebody's doing 25, how many do you want to do next year? 50. It, it, every time I would say the, the consistencies in real estate is everybody knows they could be doing twice as much if they really, if they really, you know, applied themselves. And I always say, you know what? You're absolutely right. I've seen it happen over and over and over. It happened to me. I know it's happened to me. Okay. Cause I was there. I was there when it happened to me. And, uh, you know, it was uh, an eye opening experience. Uh, okay. So the key is, and, 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 and we're in a crazy market where you can be very busy and do well. Uh, the question is, do you want to do well or do you want to do extremely well or do you want to, you know, knock it off the hook? It's up, it's up to you, really, whatever you, whatever you want to do. I can't tell you what your goals are. I can only help you achieve the goals that you have. So um, what do we know about setting a business plan? We know that you guys all have an incredible business plan. Here, okay, I'm going to say something that almost I, – I, I don't talk about it a lot because it really turns people off. Talk about a couple – well, talk about politics, turns half the group off, fires the other half off. Talk about weight, health, fires up about 20% of you, turns off the rest of the, you know, at, talk about numbers, and almost everybody goes, yeah, I don't want to. Talk about financial advising, oh, man, retirement, yeah, they don't want to think about it. If you actually spent this fourth quarter coming up in two weeks, give yourself a two-week bonus, too. If you actually spent um, this next quarter, and next year, keeping track of your numbers, it'll change your life forever. I'm not even saying believe me, okay? It's a fact. It's a fact. So if you really want to do well in this business, it's not that hard either. All you have to do is email my assistant, Sydney. Sydney, like Australia. S-Y-D-N-E-Y-S. Sydney S at B-H-H-S-N-V, like Nevada, dot com. Okay, it's that simple. And she'll send you my number analyzer. Very simple number analyzer. It's, it's great. Keeps track. It'll give you your percentages. I don't know, but when I started doing this, uh, you know, in 1990, keeping track, I used to do it on like a little spreadsheet thing. And I would transfer the sheet every month, and recalculate them. I didn't do it by the calculator. But I think that was a really good exercise because it forced me to uh, really be paying attention and keep track. Now you can go to a spreadsheet once a day or even once a week. I would go once a day, though, fill in your new numbers, and it updates immediately. It's, a, it's amazing. You know, and, and it, look, if you want to do well in business, you should know your numbers. It's like saying I balance my checkbook, um, you know, in my head while I'm driving. Yeah, 
But if you do, if you're doing that, I'm sure you've probably bounced checks unless you have just have so much money in there, All right? So keeping track is critically important. You get educated, you know what's going on, and it holds you accountable. So okay, this is my little ploy. Do it if you want to. Don't do it. I know a lot of people who are successful who never keep track, but I will tell you that uh, it is a great learning experience that I recommend the, all of you give yourself the benefit of going through that, even though it may seem a little stressful at first. Okay, but that's, you know, look, if you want to get better, stress, being a little uncomfortable is part of the process. It doesn't last forever. Okay, so you have to go through the simple math. Let's do it again. The simple math is, how many transactions do you want to do next year? Okay, if you're brand new, it's the number. I want to sell 20 homes, talk to 20 people a day. 60, day, 60 work days a quarter, 240 work days a year. That doesn't sound interesting. You make it interesting. I think talking to people is extremely interesting. Myself. It's, you know, you're, especially with you guys, you guys have the VAC 2.0. You have, you know, you have incredible tools that you can use that make you look incredibly intelligent. And they're really, I mean, Berkshire Hathaway's incredible marketing is right built in there from our wonderful marketing department. So I would definitely, definitely use it. People, somebody asked me when I was in Arizona last week, what was your first CRM? And I said, a 1 through 31 accordion file. Some of you don't even know what that is if you're, you know, probably below 35. It, it, it's, it's just a simple folder that stretches out like an accordion and there's a, there's a slot for every day of the month, 1 through 31 in there. And I used to fill out lead sheets and put them in there. Handwrite a note and send it to them. We are so far advanced over that right now. It's incredible. And you guys, and here's the, the crazy part. Very few people take advantage of the VAC 2.0 to its extent, you know, to what its intended use is. I would recommend that you do that. And it's constantly being updated. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but we do a manager's meeting with Mark. We do a uh, total leadership group from all four markets, everybody on there. And, and one of the topics we talk about every other week is the VAC 2.0. And the guy who's created it, Ken is on that call, taking notes and making changes based on what your agents are telling you and so forth. So it's pretty, it's, uh, that thing is constantly going to be updated and uh, made cutting edge. And if you don't have your people in there, you should. And if you're not using it, you're just, it's just crazy. Why would you not use one of the most incredible tools that you have? So you got to do your math and you got to make sure that you have, if you're brand new and you want to sell 20, you got to talk to 20. If I'm already selling 20 and I want to go to 30, then I got to talk to 10 additional people. You know, like I said, five days a week, 60 days a work quarter, 240 work days in a year. It's that simple. Make it interesting by having fun doing it. You can have fun doing it. I used to. You ever notice if you decide to do something, you can make it work. But if you're telling yourself, uh, it's so bad, uh, and it's never going to be good if you describe it like that. All right? All right, so um, any questions about that? The math. The math is very important. You've got to know your math. So it's either the number, if you're less than two years in the business, or if you're getting repeat and referral business that's usually about two years or more, then it's the difference between where you are and where you want to go, and those are the number of transactions you have to have. Within the five lead sources. The five lead sources are very – by the way – I'm doing success series starting tomorrow again, one to four on Google Hangouts. I'm in Nevada this week. I just did it in Arizona last week. If you haven't done it in a while or you've never done it, you should be on that call. The, the link is everywhere uh, out in the emails and the marketing, you know, it's coming out to you guys. So, you know, use that link to get on the call 21st, 22nd, 23rd, one to four. Everyone should do it a couple times a year. It's, it's that good a review because I'm constantly updating it. Okay. All right. So um, you have to, so the lead sources are your sphere. And once again, make sure they're all in the VAC 2.0, your sphere. Are you talking to them enough? Are you going through it alphabetically to make sure you're touching base with them? Because if you think they know, oh, well, they know what I do. They'll call me. You've made a huge mistake already. They won't call you. It's weird. It's not their job to remember what you do. It's your job to remind them what you do. Okay. So that's number one, your sphere. Rule of thumb, make sure you talk to them at least three, four times a year, five or six won't kill you. It'll just get you more referrals because you're constantly reminding them. Well, that sounds salesy. Exactly. You're a salesperson. Embrace it. You don't have to call them and be obnoxious. 
you know, you just call them and say, hey, I'm, you know, check in however you know them. And then, that the very, you know, if they haven't brought up real estate, which most of them do, then just say at the end, and by the way, don't forget what I do for work. If I can help anybody in your church group, your family, your neighborhood, your office, you know, let me know. I'd love to help them. Okay. Well, you know, that, I don't want to beg for business. That's not begging. That's offering your professional service. All right. So your sphere. Second group, expired listings. I was just talking to a rock star this morning, and he said, expires are tough right now. And I said, yeah, but the old expires aren't as tough. So if you want to call the new expires, I recommend you do that. If you want to call the old expires, and I'm talking about go back three, four years because they have equity, I would definitely recommend doing that. All right, because it works is why I recommend doing that. Another group is, you know, uh, farming. Farming is a great group. Decide where your farm is going to be. And, you know, the farm could be demographic, too. It could be, you know, um, I used to be in the medical field. I used to be this, whatever. And I have a complete amount of people from it. I used to be in, you know, uh, casino business. If you have a huge uh, business like that, you, you can come, you can come them as a farm, too. Okay? Another group are for sale by owners. Every one of you in a tight inventory market should be visiting for sale by owners. So I love people tell me that's a waste of time. Okay, so, okay. You have a real estate license, and people have their home on the market for sale by owner, and you think it's a waste going to visit those? To me, that says everything about your confidence level. If I go into a house as a real estate agent to a house that they're trying to sell but they haven't listed, how can that ever be a waste of my time? It can't. All right, so I recommend you go see that. But, but what, it's not a real appointment. It is if you turn it into one. And, and it, sometimes it takes a week or two before it turns into a real appointment. So you have time. For sale by owners, go with the people that show effort. You can't show no effort and get listings, folks. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, I love people tell me, but I read the secret. I, so did I. Where in there does it say, do nothing, think about business, and it comes your way? Thinking about business and meditating is great. But it only works if you act consistent with that, too. The law of action and the law of attraction are a package set. You can't separate them. All right, so you've got to do both. Okay, so we've got sphere, we've got expires, we've got farming, we've got for sale by owners, and then we've got social media. Well, I don't like social media. I, I, honestly, you're talking right now to one of the biggest holdouts known to man. I didn't have a Facebook page until five years ago. Now, as you can tell, I do a lot of social media. People will go, why? Because it works. I don't want to be a fake model. <laughs> I heard that term the other day. I thought that was so funny. Fake model. I don't want to be a fake model. I don't want to be a rock star. I want to recruit agents from other companies and keep the ones we have by showing them what we offer as a company. That's my job. Your job is fake listings and sales from the internet. And social media is the best way to do it. Yeah, but I don't agree with what everybody's saying on social media. So what? Don't read it. You think I sit down at home and watch social media and read it? I don't do that. I, I use it to my benefit, and I do look for stuff our agents are doing, though. Okay, it, it's a tool. It's not a news outlet. Although some people try to make it as that. It's not. Okay, it's a tool, and you can do business from the tool if you don't take it personally. All right, so just look at it this way. Um, when I started in the business in 1985, they have the same coverage that you guys can have for free with Instagram and, social, and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and even, uh, what's the other one called, um, TikTok. Okay, you'd have to buy newspaper, magazine, TV, bus benches, billboards, you have to buy all of that to get the same coverage that you guys can get for free right now. You're really, I mean, it's pretty incredible. If you choose to take advantage of it. And not everybody does, by the way. All right. Any questions so far? So you guys are getting where I'm going with this, right? So um, any questions so far? Anybody want to hit star six and ask me a question? Star six, I can hear you, but then make sure you remute your own phone from your phone because most people are on their cell phones, which I am too. All right. So, okay. So now I have my number 
and I've decided what lead sources I'm going to work with, whether it be door knocking, over the phone, social media, all of that. Now I come up with a plan. So I'd recommend that every one of you sit with your manager and do the business plan. They all have a copy of it, just like you do. Take a success series, you have it. You even have Mark's four step if, you've, if you're advanced a little bit past the first step. But you have to, so you have to do your business plan. You have to know your numbers. Okay, and then start acting and walking and talking. Whatever your goal is, whatever the schedule you need to follow for next year, you need to start doing that now. So that'll make you finish strong this year, and it'll have, make you start your best first quarter ever. Is anybody else on this call other than me sell, sick of selling themselves short? Because if you're not doing what we just did, you're accepting less, selling yourself short, that's always going to eat at you. Always, always, always going to eat at you. It's just that simple. Okay, so I'm going to do my number. So then, then you have to have a schedule, a schedule that goes along with it. Right, and the schedule, people say, well, my, okay, my first question to everybody is, what's your number? My number's 20. Okay, when do you do your 20? Well, you tell me, when's the best time? And my answer always is, anytime you will. As long as you do it between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., which is the federal law, can't do it before 8, can't do it after 8. As long as you make your calls or do your door knocking or between 8 and 8 every day, that's the perfect time to do it. But if you're asking me, my favorite time, you know, was between 8 and 11, 11.30. Okay, that's because statistically, all right, uh, more people are going to answer the phone in a better mood or answer the door or whatever. Uh, late in the afternoon, I believe, they're coming home from work or they're helping the kids with homework or they're making dinner. Or, but when they're home at 9 o'clock on a Tuesday, all right, there's a reason for that. They're not, do, they're not at work. They're maybe doing something or taking a day off or whatever it is. Or some people work out of their house now. All you door knockers out there, you know that your door knocking ratio went from 25, 30% up, up to like 45% since the pandemic because there are more people home. It's just that simple. There are more people home, more people working out of, them, out of their houses, which is pretty incredible. I, I know a couple people in my family alone, two of them since the pandemic, both back in New England. One of them works out of the house and the company has made it optional. You can come in or you can... Because a lot of companies have figured out, depending on what you do, some people are actually more productive at home. They start earlier. They don't have to drive in and drive back, so they use that time to work, right? So uh, a lot of, you know, it's and just maybe a trend that continues. So um, that's happening, right? So you got more people home. I also think, uh, you know, I'm crazy. I, I know I am, but I also think that uh, Amazon has made door knocking so much better for you because so many more people answer the door now because they're having deliveries. And most Amazon people, they ring the doorbell, even though they don't wait for you to answer it. Oh, my delivery's there. And then, boom, I'm standing there. Hi, this is Ruth Barabee with Berkshire Hathaway. Now, don't use the DJ voice. I'm just kidding around. Just use your normal voice. Okay? So, you know, and people, you need to understand how important this is. What I just went through is nothing you haven't heard before, right? But if the key is being consistent, disciplined, and regimented about it to make sure you get it in every day. Now, to me, the best time to do that is first. Just like for me, the best time to work out is first thing in the morning. That's for my life. It actually trickles over to work and everything too. The best thing for my job is to get my prospecting done first because then I have the rest of the day to do everything else. Your energy, your enthusiasm, everything. Then that carries right forward into everything else you're doing. You need to have energy and enthusiasm about your job. You need to have energy and enthusiasm when you're talking to people. Think about this. When people are moving, it's one of the most exciting, scary thing, all wrapped into one that they can do. And how you're being as a person is completely helpful one way or the other. Or hurtful. Right? 
All right. Does anybody have any questions about the process I just went through? I know somebody has to have a question. Don't me. Feel free unmuting yourself. Star six, and then I can hear you. Star six, and then I can hear you. Nobody has a question. Which reminds me of Arizona last week, and then eventually one person asked, and then we went through like eight of them. All right. So that means that everybody on this call is going to do what we just mentioned. And I'm telling you, I want you to do it today. I want you, I want you to sit down and come up with your number. I want you to sit with your manager and do your business plan. I want you to come up with your daily schedule that's consistent with achieving your goal for next year and then start doing it now. I don't care that the market's incredible. I don't care we have low inventory. It doesn't matter. If you're not maximizing this, this, you know, your existence in real estate, if you're not maximizing what you could be achieving from this goal, I mean, from this market, what, is, what does it matter if the market's incredible? Right? You have to be maximizing this in order for it to make it exciting and wonderful for you. And everybody has the ability to do that. So you realize that I'm not giving you something that might work. I'm giving you something that works every single time if you do it. I have never met anybody go down this path, super consistent about their contacts, maybe go to the Success Center live in Vegas if you're here, right here at the St. Rose office, okay, on the third floor, but it's actually on the first floor now because there's more room down there, all right? And then, you know, if you're in Arizona or in California, there's a link. To, you know, the email goes out every Sunday. Ask your manager. They also have the link. You can email my assistant, Sydney. She'll send you the link. There's no excuse not to be on there. So you can be on live or you can be on Google Hangouts, okay? It's, it's every single day. And, they, you know, Jamal goes through role-playing and situations and listing presentation and how to work with buyers in today's market, everything. So if you buy into the concept, you have every tool available, just like the VAC. You know, but once again, only a certain percentage of the company, the agents use the VAC. That to me is a shame. If I had that when I was selling, it would be so, it'd be so helpful because I would, put, I would spend time every day, like 10 minutes, putting new people in I just got that day, setting them up on neighborhood reports and, you know, the, the newsletter and making sure that it's up and running. And if you have an assistant, they can do that for you. There's no excuse. You have no excuse to be successful. Everything, you have all the tools available to you. It's like you've been given a franchise that all you have to do is use it, like McDonald's, Burger King. I don't agree with fast food, okay? But uh, that's why uh, you, you, anybody, anybody know why French people like snails? French people you know, like in Paris like snails because they really don't like fast food. But then, I know that was terrible. So terrible it was actually good. All right, so you have to decide how I'm going to apply this, how I'm going to do this, and then you got to start acting, walking, talking, being that person. 60 to 90 days before it happens. That's why we have a two-week plan. You have two weeks here to get that started. And then for the next 90 days, October, November, December, make, remember, make it a September to remember by getting this done and rock through October doing it. Then November, see, and, and, and let me tell you where I learned this. In my, my old market in New England where I'm from, my nine little towns I covered, I only did 15 percent of my, and if any of you know me, no, I'm not a very analytical person, but I figured out the numbers. I got used to them quickly because it really helped me in the rest of my business, and it does not take long to keep track of them. So I knew that I did 15 percent of my business in the first quarter, about 35 percent in the second quarter, almost 30, like 28, whatever, and the balance, 18, 20 percent in the fourth quarter every single year. So right now, the fourth quarter is when I was able to prospect more and a major percentage of the first quarter as well. So I always prospected more so because I had way more seasonality than we have here. So I had way more reaping of my sowing if I was sowing more when I could sow more. So the old saying, reap what you sow is so true. If, you know, you're sowing why you should sow, <laughs> then you have more to reap when you reap. All right. Does that make sense, everybody? All right. Last chance for a question. We can sneak one in here. We got three minutes. Question. Don't be shy. 
All right, guys, so look, we'll do this again in exactly one week. All right, make sure that you go through this process. You know, look, at, if you want to have the best year ever next year or achieve your goal at least, okay, you need to do this. If you have any questions, you can call me anytime and definitely reach out, reach out to your managers as well. Okay, guys, you're the best. We'll pick this up in exactly one week. Go get them. Look forward to talking to you all soon. Thank you.